let's get right to the two nuclear power plants threatened by severe flooding from the Missouri River. Rising waters there, you see, punctured a flood barrier at one plant, and another one is on high alert. ABC's Clayton Sandell has the latest. He's in Blair, Nebraska. And how's it going there at the plant there, Clayton? Well, good morning, Robin. We're showing you a live picture right now in the center right part of your screen of those Missouri River floodwaters that have essentially surrounded this nuclear power plant. The situation here is serious enough that the head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission will be here today, making sure everything is being done to protect this plant as the waters rise. The Missouri River that normally cools the Fort Calhoun nuclear station, now its worst enemy. On Sunday, a levee helping protect electrical transformers collapsed, forcing workers to switch to emergency generators. The plant has been shut down since April. The head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is in Nebraska to see for himself, but insists there is no danger. Mother Nature takes care of the floods, so uh, we have to do the best we can to, to make sure we're prepared. and. Uh, all the plants in the U.S. have been designed to deal with what we think are historically the largest possible floods. Some nuclear watchdog groups are not convinced. They point out that just last October, nuclear regulators said Fort Calhoun failed to maintain procedures for combating a significant flood, earning a yellow safety violation. New documents show that only 11 days ago, workers were still plugging holes where water could come flooding in. If water does penetrate into the reactor itself, that it could encroach upon electrical circuits, uh, junction boxes, on safety-related equipment. Downstream, workers at a second nuclear plant near Brownville, Nebraska, have put up a 10-foot wall to keep water out. But that plant is operating normally, and officials say flooding is not a major threat. Meanwhile, in Minot, North Dakota, the Soros River peaked two feet lower than expected, but still flooded this elementary school and over 3,000 homes. As ABC's David Curley found, the destruction is extensive and will be long-lasting. Could be two to four to six weeks or more before the water actually goes back into its banks. And before these people get to come see their houses. Before they get to come and see their houses. Now, there are four levels of nuclear emergencies, and for now, this incident is categorized as the least serious of those four. Officials say there has been no radiation release at this plant, and none is expected.